yet another session of the AHMC Clinical Diaries, Season 2, powered by Advent Biotech Private Limited and hosted by Student Council of Alvarez Homeopathic Medical College, Mangalore. Today, we are immensely honored to have amidst us Dr. Narayana Prasad Pillay. Sir started his private practice in 2003 and has graduated with MD in repertory from Government Homeopathic Medical College, Trivandrum. Sir has joined the government service as RMO at Government Homeopathic Hospital, Kayankulam, and has also served as a lecturer in ANSS HMTC Kotem in Community Medicine Department. In November 2016, Sir presented his paper in European Congress of Homeopathy, Vienna, Austria, on the topic Homeopathic Management of Multidrug Resistant Carbuncle. Dr. Narayana is also trained at IACH Greece under Professor George Wittlokas on analysis of difficult cases. We welcome you, sir, to this session. I also extend a heartfelt welcome to our principal, Dr. Praveen Raj, Vice Principal, Dr. Roshan Pindo, and AAO, Dr. Pregna Ma'am. Also, a hearty welcome to all our participants. Without much further ado, I hand over the section to Dr. Narayana. Over to you, sir. Hi everyone, uh, respected faculties and uh, my dear friends. I would rather call you friends because we are going to be friends in a, a lot less than time than you can see. So the thing is, uh, before I start my session, I would like to pay my tributes to uh, Master Harriman. And also one more thing to say. Uh, because many of us think homeopathy is a really complicated science. Actually, homeopathy is not that complicated. Uh, guys like us make it complicated. It's rather simple. So the thing when, uh, that you have to do when you approach a case is that you have to find the simple things in the case. That is the uh, not so much visible but the thing that characterizes the patient. That's how you find out the character of it. So I would like to say one more thing. When you fall prey to such theories, uh, I'm not against any theories, but first you have to uh, thoroughly understand what Hanuman has pondered. Then go to other theories. There may be Vijayakas theory, there may be Rajeshankar's theory. They all have their intelligence, their uh, ideas based on the solid basis of homeopathy first. Then they started, uh, actually I would say, moving away from the basic premises of homeopathy. So the thing first is you have to find that solid basis first, then go for another theory. If that doesn't work out, you have to be sure that that is not the right thing to do. You have to go back again. So the thing is, first you make a solid basis on your theory first, on the homeopathic premises. That's the first thing you have to get right. Then you can actually build upon it. Okay, so I shall start with my slide. Can I see my screen? Not yet, sir. That slide is missing right now, just, just from the net. 
can you see can you see it right now uh, no sir i think slide share is not on sir so how is it now uh, sir we can see your laptop screen sir okay sure Uh, yes, sir. We can see the slides. Okay, sure. So I would like to say first, you have to uh, think about the guidelines for a proper repetition. Our session is about practical repetition. So first, you have to get your guidelines clear first. You all know the motto that. A well done, a well taken case is half cured. Actually, it doesn't mean that the case is going to be cured in a lesser time. But it says that if you take a case well, then there is a possibility of finding the right remedy. The, taking the case never helps us in uh, curing the patient. Actually, the remedy does. So, if you take the case well, you can prescribe on the particular case with much more ease. And also it's possible for you to find the similar one in a rapid way. So uh, I, would, I would also like to say a few things about uh, uh, prescribing first, then I will go to the repetition part. So always in a chronic illness, uh, try to find the essence of the case. That's what Ken has been doing, with all guys has been doing. Almost all the stalwarts have been trying to find the essence behind the case. In a chronic illness, if you can find the essence, then it is very possible that you can find the similar one. So, and maybe even just one medicine may, might be needed only to cure the patient. You may not have to find another remedy after that. It's possible, but I'm not sure, I am not saying that it happens every time, but in almost uh, 30 to 40 cases, it is fine. It is seen that just one medicine might be needed to cure the whole case. But in many many other cases, we may have to follow up with, with a uh, complementary remedy, also a satellite remedy, or even maybe you have to prescribe for an acute in between if it's severe. So if it's not severe don't prescribe for an acute. If you think that the patient can be well off without a medicine, then don't give him a medicine. So that's the first thing you have to know. So in a chronic illness, always try to find the essence of the case. Like in uh, phosphorus, you see diffusion as the essence. Uh, you can see in its mental picture that he always uh, mingles very easily. He's loquacious. He wants to be communicative. Uh, he explains all his things to others and also he has the desire to know more about others. He is sympathetic. Uh, he is a uh, very jolly fellow. But all of us are not jolly fellows. There are also persons that who are very indifferent but may need phosphorus, especially in old ages. Okay. So that kind of, uh, that kind of diffusion is also seen in is bleeding tendencies, the blood doesn't glow, the blood flows very freely. So also they get affected by things around them very easily. That's almost a synonym for sympathetic. They get easily affected. So we can see uh, phosphorus in the rubric, mind uh, easily affected by horrible things. Horrible things affect her profoundly. Another remedy is calcareagar, and another one major remedy is secuta. So phosphorus is also seen in that rubric, and also in the rubric impressionable. They can be easily impressed. It doesn't mean you can impress a person like that. It says things around him or her makes a definite impression on him. It changes something in him. So that's the kind of phosphorus I am talking about. So that is the kind of essence. If we can find that essence in a patient, they can prescribe much more easily. So what about if we can't find an essence? So the next thing is you have to make use of complete symptoms. 
If you don't find the essence, go for the complete symptoms. Uh, I'm not going to uh, stick on to any particular uh, repertory session methods per se, because uh, that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, desire to stick on to and be rigid in the repertory session methods usually doesn't work in the long run. When you practice in a clinic, you have to follow both of them at the same time. So my kind of cases would be mostly like, uh, I take the Ken part also, and also the Boga part. So it can be mixed into a perfect whole. That's what flex flexibility is all about. So if you can't find an essence, go for a complete symptom. And if we get a complete symptom, we can enquire if he has the essence, May not, uh, it might not be present right then because he uh, or he might be having all the symptoms pertaining to that drug before before this condition has uh, presented. So you can find, you may find, I'm not saying you can find, but you may find certain features of the essence of the particular patient, like uh, if you see that a person has uh, symptoms of peptic ulcer, like he wants to eat all the time, eating alleviates his uh, gastric pains, gastric pain is of a cramping nature, all those symptoms suggest, are suggestive of a peptic ulcer case. So most of the times, an indicated remedy can be graphitis. Graphitis is a very important remedy for peptic ulcer. And if you can ask about their previous history and if you can find <clears throat> they were having skin complaints, which has the characteristic of graphitis, then you can almost be sure that graphitis is going to the remedy that is going to relieve his peptic ulcer and also bring back his, if the eruptions has been suppressed, bring back, back these eruptions to the surface. So such is the cases, uh, uh, such is the uh, stage with every every other case also. So you can get a complete symptom, and from that you can go to the essence. But in some cases you may not, uh, you cannot go from the complete symptom to the essence. So that's not going to be a problem. Just prescribe on the complete symptom. You prescribe on the complete symptom, and then another set of symptoms may appear that symptoms and also the other symptoms that hasn't been reduced by the previous prescription should be combined and made into another repertory session hole and then analyze on the case and finally prescribe on that totality. So it can be called a zigzag prescribing. Actually, we homeopaths all do this kind of zigzag prescribing. That's how the complementary relations have been formed. Because uh, how can we say that you have given sulfur first, so you have to follow it with calcarea, and then you have to follow with lycopodium. No, you can't say that. After sulfur, if the patient develops symptoms of calcarea, you have to give him calcarea. And after calcarea, if she has uh, complaints of lycopodium, like increased flat lens, aggravation 4 to 8 p.m., then you have to prescribe lycopodium. So if the patient, if the person, doesn't exhibit symptoms of calcarega, we cannot prescribe calcarega. That's one of the basic premise of homeopathy, similar one. So you have to think the case about, uh, you have to uh, analyze your case like that. You can get another remedy also. If you have taken the case and uh, you have found out that the sulfur is the right similar one for now, and after you give sulfur, he start developing symptoms of, say, rust tox, portable rust tox. Then you have to prescribe rust tox. Even if rust tox is an acute of calcarega, or rust tox can be used in calcarega patients, the patient symptoms has to suggest calcarega. If the patient symptoms are suggesting rust tox, calcarega is not going to help. So the complementary relations help us much in prescribing the second remedy or the third remedy, but it also has its loopholes. You have to understand that. There is no fixed route in homeopathy. The patient's symptoms suggest as the right remedy. 
So if you are not getting a, what about a third scenario? Like uh, you are not getting a complete symptom. So there is only one one way. If you can, uh, if you can't uh, get a complete symptom, you can inquire how he is he or she is reacting in an acute. We always seen that uh, calcareous how patients can react in an acute, like a belladonna or a rostrum or a pulsatilla. So if the person, if the person exhibits his, his symptoms like belladonna, rostrum or pulsatilla, then you can think about. I am saying you can think about calcareous cup. I am not saying you should think about calcareous. You can think about calcareous cup. It doesn't mean you have to prescribe calcareous for calcareous cup for such cases. So. If you have to uh, prescribe calcarea for ca such cases, you have to get symptoms of calcarea first. So you can formulate a new way of questioning him. New way of questioning the patient. The patient uh, can uh, can be more productive if the person is not willing to explain his symptoms to you, uh, partly due to his uh laziness or partly due to his uh shy nature then you can do one thing is you can formulate your questions likewise so you have one chance to find uh, i can't say that you can find but you can think about a remedy that can be a close closely related to remedy how he reacts in an acute so what about the fourth scenario? If all else fails, prescribe all single symptoms. That's the only way to go. If you don't get an essence, if you don't get a couple of symptoms, and uh, you don't know how he reacts in an acute, or you can't make sure that how his symptoms are presented in an acute. So then only you have you only have one way open. You have to prescribe on the symptoms that he presents to you. There may be only one symptom, like. Uh, a severe pain in the right ureter with severe vomiting, right ureter colic with vomiting. Osimicanum is a main remedy, and I have found results with osimicanum in such cases because the pain is pain was very severe, and uh, he was actually writhing with pain, lying on the floor, and with excessive vomiting. He just could not uh, stop gagging, stop vomiting. Uh, a small amount of water can cause a severe bout of vomiting. So the case uh, was case got better by osmecanum, and two days afterwards he passed a stone. So the thing is, you can prescribe on single symptoms, but only if all the other scenarios fail. If you can't find an essence, you can't get a complete symptom, and you can't find out how he reacts in an acute. Then you can prescribe on single symptoms. Going to the next slide. And uh, another thing, importance of causation in a case. Actually, importance of uh, causation has been given much more importance uh, than it actually requires. Uh, I doesn't mean that position is not important, but mainly, how 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 do you think that we have found causation uh, ailments from rubrics? It's actually done from a clinical practice, from our clinical experience. Like uh, you already know that natural self can be used for ailments from injury to head. How do you know that natural self is uh, useful in such cases. There's only one way. When a patient came to you, you took his symptoms, took the person's symptoms and analyzed and you got natural self. And when you ask about anything, he, uh, he is saying that he developed all these symptoms after he got an injury to head. That's the way many of our masters, many of our authors found out that natural self can be used in cases having bad effects of injury to head. Likewise, sarnica, likewise, tachycardia, 
Likewise, almost all of the remedies in our repertory. Sorry, Metro Medica. Uh, because I am a repertory and that's why a repertory comes first. All in our Metro Medica means that's actually got from clinical practice, clinical experience. So, acute and inacute and uh, in acute cases, uh, I would rather say that causation can be much more important. But in chronic cases, not that much because uh, many of the time, many times the person's picture can change from one to another in a long period of time. So the person might be requiring natural self at that time when he had a injury to head or might be it might be arnica but now he may have migrated from that symptom picture to another set of symptom picture it's like the addition of another layer over the last layer like the person's uh, persona has a layer of natural cells and above that there may be another layer of calcarega bopal settler or any medicine you assume so the person is having the calcarega both the pulse layer layer he is not going to respond to the natural salt layer you have to give calcarea or pulse circular as the case suggests peel off that layer and then natural cell symptoms start to exhibit with much clarity and that is the time you have to prescribe natural salt Writing down the symptoms as the patient expresses it. We all study in Ayurveda that you have to write down the symptoms uh, as the patient expresses it, but we don't do that. Actually, it's better if you jot down the symptoms uh, in the native tongue of the patient. Rather, it actually helps because uh, some guys, uh, some persons might say uh, a thing but mean another thing. So you can make clear that what is he implying. So jot down the symptoms as the patient expresses clearly so that during the second session, during the second visit, you can clarify on that symptoms. You can ask him, uh, you said you were having burning in this part of the body. So how is it now? You can actually say that. Some might say it's heat, some might say it's burning. Heat is different, burning is different. He is actually perceptible to another's hand also. But not be there. Uh, it can't be uh, the same in every case because the person may feel heat in his body, but the, another person cannot feel it. That also can happen. So you have to write down the exact symptom the patient expresses and uh, in his native language. That's the thing you have to remember. Or how to select symptoms for the repertory session proper and PDF. Actually, if we get the symptoms right, it's very easy to select a repertory session proper and PDF. Uh, the thing is, when we take symptoms, that's how our imaginations run wild. The patient says uh, he is having uh, fear of dark, fear of darkness. So. Actually, such symptoms, uh, our ears prick up when you hear such symptoms. Yeah? Almost sure that you are going to take that fear of darkness, at least one mental symptom you have in its pocket. So, the thing is, he may be afraid of dark, but you have to question him further. He may be afraid of dark because he might have a fear of ghost, or may he may have a, fight, a, fr a fear of robbers or just darkness, or he desires company more than any other person, or in some persons, it can be fear of snakes, because uh, someone finds that uh, the outside of his house is dark and he has fear of snakes and he, can go, he can't go out. So it also can happen. But the patient may express the symptom as only fear of darkness. So you can't be sure what the patient is rightly implying. So you have to ask him further. Uh, the way I do the cases, uh, when you get a symptom, I ask further. I ask him to explain a little more. Why are you afraid of dark? Then he starts saying that because of this, because of that, I am afraid of the dark. 
So that is going to be the center. It's not fear of darkness. If you, if you have to, if you want to take fear of darkness, you can take fear of darkness, but note, uh, think that it's of a higher degree. The intensity has to be clear. You have to give more importance to the symptom of the, uh, which particular symptom the patient is having, which causes this kind of fear of darkness. And about the PDF, there may be many symptoms, many lucrative symptoms, many uh, beautiful symptoms. Uh, you, uh, when you hear that, you uh, think that uh, you are going to find this symptom, this one particular beautiful symptom. If I get this symptom in the repertory, you are going to prescribe and he is going to be okay. But you may not find such symptoms. There are many symptoms in a case where you can find an exact match in the repertory. So you can do one thing, put it in the box of the PDF. And finally, after analyzing the case, after the repository analysis, read in the materia medica. And you may find such symptoms in those medicines that come up first. I'm not saying you are going to find it, but there's a strong possibility that you are going to find it. And I always try to read the master's material, like not the new ones. Like, uh, uh, I'm not saying Philip and Bailey is bad, but it, uh, it, it kind of gives more importance to the mental features of the case. Uh, but also the thing is, it's uh, very difficult to get all these symptoms in a case. We might get only one or two symptoms from the mental sphere and most of the other symptoms from the physical sphere. So if you are going to connect it all, it's going to be really difficult. So always try to read the master material, master's materials like Clark's, Metronic Pura, Kent, Kering. Uh, actually, one of, one of our, uh, our own, Dr. N. M. Chaudhary's book is really good. You have to read that, study on material. It's a really good book. And uh, also, uh, I won't say TFLN because TFLN is a rather bulky book and uh, it's actually contained symptoms of proving. So it's actually quite boring reading a book, but it can be used as a reference. Clark is a better option because it's only three books and you can keep it in your clinic or if you are using computer, there's not going to be a problem. You can browse any pages at any time. So the symptoms that you can find in the repertory, which is marked, clear, and can be given intensities, can be used in the repertory session proper, and the other symptoms to the PDF. And about the marking intensities. Marking intensities, you have to, uh, actually this idea was coined first by Professor Vidalkas. Actually, it's much helpful if you are using the radar program. The VS Vidokas expert system in the radar program actually demands that you have to add intensities to the symptoms of the case. Like there are there can be four four levels of intensities. So I am going to say about the first intensity, the one. If all the symptoms has to be spontaneous. All the symptoms has to, be, has to be spontaneously expressed by the person. So one is given for a symptom that is present, but it's not severe or frequent. Two intensity is given to a, a symptom which is present, but it's either severe or frequent. Note both. It can be severe or it can be frequent, but not both. If the symptom is very severe, is severe and frequent, you have to give a three intensity to the symptom. And for four intensity, the symptom has to be very severe and very frequent, like a headache in a, like a bursting headache in a glonoid. Actually, these intensities uh, works as a mirror image as seen in the repertory. That's how it helps. So if you are getting a headache, like severe bursting headache, and if you give a four mark to the syndrome, glonoin has a probability to come forward in the analysis. So that's how VS works. So if you are not using VS, intensities, I'm not saying intensities, it doesn't matter, but it's of least important. Uh, 
GIGO means garbage in, garbage out. You all know the acronym for this. It means what kind of symptoms you are converted, the symptoms that you have converted to form a particular rubric, it has to be right. That's the uh, time when we, when our imagination run wild, the patient is saying this symptom. So it can be this. There's no can be. As a homeopath, we are not uh, doing the job of a psychologist or a uh, psychiatrist. We are not going to judge our patient according to what his symptom is present. What he is saying, you have to take it. We are not going to analyze a person. What he say, we take it. What he expresses, we take it. That's all. We are not going to find out. Uh, he may be having uh, difficulties in coping with his uh, uh, father's problems or uh, father's behavior, neighbor's behavior, might be. But he has to say it. And if it has started to affect him, then only it becomes a symptom and then only it becomes a rubric. Also, in many cases, I have seen that uh, Almost all the students take ailments from grief. Who hasn't ever had death in the family? It's, it's actually, uh, you have to give more importance to that symptom because you have to say that if the person has started to develop such complaints after a death in the family, then only you can give credibility to that symptom. That can happen in any family. So that doesn't mean that illness from grief or illness from death of beloved ones has to be has to happen, has to be there. Also in uh, illness from disappointed love. So these all symptoms has its importance only when the symptom picture has developed after such states, such uh, stages in their life. Only then it can be given importance. So that's what I'm saying. Assumptions and presumptions, deadly sense of your empath. Don't assume, don't presume, just take the case at is, as it is. But you have to inquire more. Why is it? Why is that? That's the question you only have to ask. No, uh, how, why? Very few questions you have to ask. Then you can get the picture of a case. Be flexible. Don't stick to any particular repertory session with us. That is my advice to you. Don't stick on to particular repertory session. That, uh, you say that uh, the case is, uh, has more generalists, so I will stick to Kent. The case has more pathological generalists, so I stick to both. Actually, you can combine both. And most of the modern repertories, I'm saying the software repertories and also the book repertories, can be used in both ways. Either can, either Bonnie has in any way you can think about. Every repertory can be used that way. So this is the end of this slide. Uh, shall I move on to the case session? Uh, yes, sir. You can, sir. Okay. I think everyone can read my screen, right? Uh, yes, it's visible, sir. Okay. So I'm going to uh, explain the first case of this day. Uh, the thing is, you have to find rubrics for that. And if any of you have any doubts, it's best that you uh, share your doubt in the chat window. If possible, I can explain it right now or after this session has completed. Is that okay for you, Manish? Yes, I Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is a case of acute bronchitis, which came to see me on December 2, 2019. A seven-year-old female child with bronchitis cough and breathing difficulty for the last three days. She is irritable and complains of headache. The plus signs after the symptom 
denotes the intensity of the symptom. So 2 plus means in intensity 2. If it is 3 plus like a nausea here, it is it has to be marked with 3 intensity. A 7-year-old female child with bronchitic cough and breathing difficulty for the last 3 days. She is irritable and complains of headache, which is a 2 plus. She has a desire for cold drinks, which is also a 2 plus. Nausea, 3 plus, and cannot stop vomiting. There is some blood in her expectation, which is a plus, 1 plus, and she has abdominal pain, which can be the remedy. Uh, actually, Manish, I think uh, it's better that someone can answer or. Hello? Okay, so sir, if any messages come in the chat box, I'll bring that to you, sir. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, sir. So, we are going to find what kind of rubrics have to be given. Or someone else, can someone say about this uh, case, which medicine has to be used? Uh, sir, remedies are coming, sir, like phosphorus, aconite, arsar, epicac, then, okay. then lycopodium, sir. Uh, then again, herself. Okay. So it's uh, it's a fight between ourselves, phosphorus, belladonna, lycopodium, epicac, and aconite. Okay. So the thing you have to notice suddenness of a complaint can be indicative of aconite. A sudden development of syndromes can be indicative of aconite. But aconite also has to cover the pathology part of the case too. Actually, it's a, a mistake from our part that because we have uh, read, read it as a mistake, then we don't have to keep use. We, we don't have to use the pathological part of the disease. You only have to look for the other part of the disease. Actually, the totality of symptoms include the pathological changes and the other symptoms. So you have to find a medicine that covers both. So vomiting also has to be cover, covered. Uh, bronchitis has to be covered. So it's better that we go to the repertory session right now. So the, a seven year old female child with bronchitic cough and breathing difficulty for the last three days. So we are sure that it's a case of bronchitis. How, we, how, do, how do you make sure that it's a case of bronchitis by examination? So we'll look at the expert ones. Okay. Because of the characteristic V's. Now we go to the repertory. So you have to take the first symptom. You are sure that the case is a bronchitis case. So you can take that symptom at first. So it is chest inflammation, bronchial tubes. You have to take that symptom. Uh, many of our new books suggest that you don't have to take pathological symptoms. Actually, our masters did uh, actually took all the symptoms of the case. Like uh, if the patient was having, uh, how do you think that restox can be used in a case of chicken box? The vesicles of chicken box is almost similar as to the vesicles of a restox poisoning case. So you can find a similarity in the pathological, pathological picture as well. So that's how restox came to be used in a case of chicken box. But if you are saying that the, that vesicle is a pathological or a pathological uh, normality of that chicken box, so it can't be used to prescribe. So how can we prescribe restox then? But if you can find other symptoms of the restox, it's well and good. So the pathological change that you are observing in a case also has to be added into your analysis. If you are not getting a particular symptom in the repertory, 
as the uh, symptom the person expresses so you can't find an exact match in the repertory then leave it otherwise you have to take account of that so the person is having uh, the patient is having inflammation of bronchial tubes so i am going to give it a symptom of 2 she is irritable and complains of headache she can't uh, point out the part where which uh, she is having this pain but he's uh, she is saying that she is having a general headache so since it is a two mark i took head pain two mark but it's a very big rubric so you can't uh, get much use of out of that rubric if you are not using other rubrics as well Uh, so i will also i would also like to add one thing if the rubric has to be used uh, a, a rubric can be useful only if it contains at least less than 50 of 60 remedies if you are finding a rubric which contains uh, 300 or 400 remedies actually that kind of rubric is not going to be of much use in repertory session because you are going to get at least 20 or 30 remedies competing for its place in the analysis and you can be sure that you are going to find almost all the polycrest within the first 20 or 25 remedies if you are going to use a larger rubric so actually the use of repertory uh, if you are using larger rubrics it uh, defies the use of it uh, it doesn't give a, give us the advantage of using a repertory it can be called a productive so the best thing to do is if you are getting a symptom which is very large which contains remedies which are so large that uh, it contain at least 200 or more remedies it is better to not use the symptom less than 200 can be used with a pinch of salt if the rubric has 60 or less remedies that can be used with much more uh, which can be much more helpful than the other rubrics and if the rubric contain only very few remedies like less than 10 or less than 5 it is the same as if we are using a rubric containing large remedy large number of remedies is not going to be helpful but such a symptom can be used as a pdf you can move that symptom from the repertory session proper to the pdf and after when you read the metro medica you find that such a symptom is seen in this uh, medicine then well and good you can prescribe that one so here i took head pain with only two intensity and you, you can see that how many remedies it's going to be uh, in that room right it has 486 remedies under the withol cas view it is because of the withol cas view if you are using the full repertory view it is going to be 771 actually such a rubric is not much important unless characterized by a modality the thing is modality gives fineness to a symptom actually modality characterizes a symptom any person can have headache but if his headache is aggravated in open air then you can find a remedy much better the patient may be having may be saying he is having severe headache but you are asking him when does it aggravate when does it aggravate if the person can particularly point out these are the factors that aggravate the condition these are the factors that ameliorate this, the condition then you can prescribe much better actually the modality characterizes the patient like the symptoms the characteristic a particular strainness of a symptom characterizes a patient likewise the modalities characterizes the patient as well so because the modalities are actually modalities of the symptom way the person expresses is directly connected to his susceptibility 
every of every one of us is susceptible to uh, many things uh, like having a normal susceptibility and also like the abnormal susceptibility like we having uh, some might have uh, some uh, someone's headache might get aggravated if he goes out into the sun uh, some uh, some person's headache might get aggravated by uh, sitting inside a warm room like pulsar lung you know in etc so that all helps us to understand the susceptibility of the patient and our material medica is the exact mirror image of the susceptibility of every single patient so if you can find the right match in the material medica then you can prescribe that one so in this case head pain contains 771 medicines you can take that symptom uh, the the advantage that we have while using software repertory is that if the symptom has many group many medicines in it it is given least importance in the analysis that's not the same way if we do a book repetition on a repetition chart because in book repetition we all, we can always uh, see that almost all the polygraphs come up high if you are, if you can read about in the syndrome you can see anthracinum apes arsenicum belladonna brownia calcarea uh, china coccus dunoin gelsemium lacasis merxol natrum nitric acid natrum and phosphorus almost all of the major polygraphs are seen in the one rubric itself so you can take this syndrome if you are doing a software repetition because software tries to give least importance to a to a rubric which contains a large number of remedies so you can give it to mark so the next symptom she has a desire for cold drinks whenever we hear a, she has a desire for cold drinks you think that she is a case of phosphorus okay so in synthesis repertory food and drinks is seen in generalist food and drinks and drinks cold drinks cold water desire that can be given a two mark the other symptom is nausea and cannot stop vomiting so you all must have read this symptom in the material medica so where do you find that stomach cannot stop vomiting 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 incessant it doesn't stop that's a 3 plus and she is also having nausea stomach nausea which has at least seven or nine remedies you can also be given a 3 plus because the patient expresses that symptom there is some blood in her expectoration and also she has abdominal pain so where do you see blood in expectoration you have to take the chapter expectoration bloody that's only one mark and also abdominal pain Uh, we can think about a, a like accompanying symptom. There is an abdominal pain accompanied by a respiratory distress. If you can find a rubric for that, then it's good. Accompanied by respiration asthmatic complaints. Respiration complaints or respiration accompanied by abdominal complaints. Okay. actually this kind of this symptom is much more broader so it's better not to take this symptom so shall we go to the analysis part 
So, so this is the symptom. This is the chart that the software gave us. The first medicine comes up is ourselves. Second is phosphorus, Merxol, Epicac, Plumbum, Antipton, Nuxomica, Veratrum, Aconite, and Dingroot. So now we have to decide which medicine has to be given. So what is to be done? We have to go to the Timidica path. Let me check the VS also first. The VS is saying anti growth, the most probable remedy is Haliborus and also Alumin. So we are going to check it in the Arsenicum album. Senecium shows a deep-seated insecurity, feels vulnerable and defenseless, especially concerned in disease and death. No, you can't find that symptom. The street is already no restlessness, no restlessness. General is chilly, aggravation, cold, amelioration, need, no. Aggravation after midnight, aggravation seaside, discharge sacred, scanty, thin, offensive, no. Alternative complaints, tendency to malignancy. Desire. Particular is there no motion, no hot head with cold body. It's actually a keynote of uh, arsenic amalgam, hot head with a cold body. Or it's a high fever, no swelling around under the eyes, like in Kalika. Epithelium of the lips, thirst for small quantities of water frequently, affection with burning pains, no. Diary and vomiting simultaneously. This patient is not having a diarrhea. There is abdominal pain, but no diarrhea. No, no. Asthmatic aggravation, midnight. The time modality doesn't come under arsenic album. Actually, the patient didn't have any particular time modality. And also, usually in an arsenic patient, you usually find that if the person uh, drinks hot water, it is retained better, but if it drinks cold water, it's ejected out soon. In phosphorus, it's like cold water are better tolerated, cold drinks are better tolerated, but it is vomited out when it gets warm in the stomach. So it's actually uh, the opposite of arsenic album. Arsenic album can tolerate heat better, Phosphorus in his stomach complaint can tolerate cold better. So we are going next to phosphorus. Mind diffusion, open extroverted, sympathetic. No, you are not getting this, all these symptoms in the patient. You know, doctors being alone. That kind of symptoms are usually seen in a chronic patient, but in this case, uh, phosphorus is not showing, and the patient is not showing another uh, other symptoms of phosphorus as well. Maybe dimension, desire to be magnetized, sensitivity to suggestion, reassurance, concentration difficult. What about the stomach symptoms? Desire is all highly seasoned ice cream, chocolate, wine, call food and drinks. Desire, particular looking up. Thirst for cold drinks in large quantities. Appetite increased. No, the patient knows uh, her appetite was actually diminished. 
hungry at night, burning pain, ameliorated by cold drinks, and eventually vomits as soon as the water is warmed up in the stomach. It's an important symptom for bismuth and parian as well. Vomiting of undigested food soon after eating, leading hemorrhoids. So, Cough from irritation in throat, aggravation, cold air, talking, laughing, lying left side, change of temperature or weather, nervous dry cough, aggravation, presence of strangers or strong odors. Another medicine for strong odor aggravation is uh, sanguinary and phosphoric acid. Expectation hematizes. Then few of the symptoms are covered by phosphorus as well. Respiratory infections. Uh, phosphorus is a big remedy in respiratory infections. Ambulation cold rings, flushes of heat in the heart region, sensation of heat in the chest, chest immovable, sensation of heat between scapula, no. So we are finding some symptoms in phosphorus, but not all the symptoms. So next remedy, we have to go, we have to go to is, uh, I'm skipping milk salt because milk salt covers almost all of the symptoms because many of the bigger uh, bigger rubrics, the rubrics that are having a larger number of medicine has milk salt as an important drug. So the thing is, if you find in a repertory session chart, a smaller remedy, a small remedy that I mean that it's not a smaller remedy in all respects, but smaller remedies in a repertory session chart, then there is a strong possibility that that medicine is going to be the similar in the particular case. So next we are going to look at EPGAC. The first thing is complaints associated with nausea and vomiting check. Full of desires but does not know what, feels unfortunate. Actually, this symptom is mind capricious. Impatience, restless, morose with content for everything, jealous, disposition to angry, irritability from nose. The person was a little irritable, not like a phosphorus. Ailments of mortification with indignation, no. Fear of death with sighing, indifference to pleasures, and joyless, children cry and howl, no. Sensitive to warm and cold, aggravation by vomiting, periodicity, hemorrhages which are bright red, there's a possibility that hemoptysis, uh, hemoptysis, uh, the blood in the expectation was bright red. Obesity, illusion, from suppressed eruptions, anger, vexation, conversions from indigestion, uh, desire indistinct delicacies, aversion for digital. Actually, the symptom uh, desire for delicacies means the patient, uh, the person prefers that food in a particular way. Like uh, if you're saying that uh, you have to, uh, you like uh, to have a soft boiled egg, it has to be like this, the uh, color has to be like this. The thing is the hue, uh, the greenish hue on the egg yolk has to be like this. Or if you are eating an omelette, you are saying that this has to be roasted perfectly. Also, it has to have such a kind of wetness in it. Uh, this kind of uh, friability in the character of the omelette. Such is uh, the person that who desires delicacies. He can only eat if the food is presented in such a way. Calcarica is an important remedy for that. Aversion food in general. Aggravation wheel rich food raisins. Headache, headache one. With strong nausea and vomiting, no. The complaints is related to stomach. That's why he is having nausea and vomiting. She is having nausea and vomiting. Epistasis is bright red. Sinuses with respiratory complaints. Blue circles around the eyes. No, no, clean tongue, no, uneasiness, nausea and vomiting, vomiting does not relieve, nausea but not able to vomit, aggravation from smell or thought of food, rich food, ice cream, sweets, from smell or thought of food, there are many remedies in our repertory like asa, sepia, colchicum, china, looking at moving objects like in coculus, and also coculus, from smell or thought of food. Aggravation coughing with headache with hemorrhage. Stomach feels relaxed as if hanging down like in a bag. A 
symptom and stitching pain in the umbilical region. She was not particularly referring to the umbilical region, but she was having pain in her abdomen. She is only eight years old, so she cannot explain what kind of pain is she feeling. <coughs> she is feeling. Sorry. <coughs> sorry. Diarrhea with nausea and vomiting, grabbing at navel, hemorrhoids which, which bleeds profusely, dead urine, no, no, manicentric care group, respiration, respiratory complaints with nausea. So that's an important symptom in this case. The patient was having a cough, the symptom started as a, as a cough, and then she started having this nausea and vomiting. Okay, so that's check one. Respiratory complaints with nausea, suffocation from accumulation of mucus, no, in children, asthmatic rattling, aggression, warm moist weather, cough, suffocating cough with retching and vomiting. So if we can take out the suffocating part, the cough with retching and vomiting, loose cough without expectation, whooping cough with epistaxis and vomiting, okay. expectation, hemoptysis, hemoptysis, aggravation, exertion. So we can see that uh, many of the symptoms, also just bronchitis in children. Epicac is a main remedy for bronchitis in children. So we can see that many of the symptoms, many of the symptoms as in the analysis are, is covered by Epicac in a much better way. Actually, if you look at the modalities and also the characteristic nature of the case, that's also covered in an Epicac case. If you are going to prescribe arsenic and album or phosphorus, you have to get symptoms of arsenic album and phosphorus. Or even Muxol. Muxol was the third running remedy. So here the case was Epicac. And Epicac one dose was given. And uh, afterwards, uh, she, uh, the person's, uh, the patient's mother called me and told me she was better for three to four hours and then she started vomiting again. I usually give him, uh, give them, uh, give the patients another dose of the medicine that I give. And also, if I suspect another remedies like arsenic and phosphorus, if I think that there is a possibility that it is a case of arsenic, then I also I give them uh, one dose of arsenic also, and also with phosphorus. So the case showed that after the administration of AP. The patient didn't vomit for three to four hours. And then again, she started vomiting, and I prescribed Epigac 200, another dose again. And afterwards, the next day, uh, I, I always tell the person that if you are taking medicine for an acute, you have to visit me the next day. Then only I can know that the medicine has acted or if the medicine has gone wrong or if I have to prescribe another medicine. That's the way I do in my clinic. And if it's a fever case, I usually keep them in my uh, consulting chamber, or if there are no patients outside, then in my consulting chamber, or in the waiting room, just to check that my our medicine has acted first. Then only I prescribe another remedy. There's no way that I prescribe a, a, in a bottle of pills, like Epicac 200 in one bottle of pills, and you have to take uh, one uh, half hourly or one hourly. I'm a classical prescriber, so I do give them one dose. And if it's absolutely necessary, then only I prescribe another dose. So that's the right way to do classical homeopathy. Because there's a possibility that you can prescribe another dose again, again, and again, and a false proving and set in. And the patient may the next uh, come the next day with the symptom, so the same as the symptoms as you have prescribed yesterday, but with much more intensity. That's a false proving. The only thing you have to do is either wait for the time that the aggravation tides over, or you have to prescribe another dose, can, which can be very close to Epicac, but also in the antidotal relationship with with Epicac. So if you don't want to go there, it is best to prescribe the dose in one uh, single, as a single dose. And if absolutely necessary, go for another dose. Or you can do this thing also. You have to, you have given them one dose, you have to take that to the uh, home, uh, mix it in a half glass of water, 
and take one dose, one spoon out of it, which is considered as a one dose. And after, if she or he, he or she is having a relapse, they can take another spoon from it. So it counts as the second dose. So that can also be done. So if you are going to prescribe, especially in an acute case, multiple dosages actually uh, kinds of hinders the pathway to cure. Prescribe one dose. And if you think that the medicine is right, then even though the person hasn't uh, got any amelioration from the first dose, prescribe one more dose. And if it's not working, you can throw that medicine away because that is not the remedy, right remedy. You have to look for other symptoms. So in this case, uh, Ipecac was prescribed. And the next day when she came to see me, she was good, really good. Uh, there was no weakness. Uh, she was feeling better. She ate her dinner uh, the night he, she came to see me. She ate her dinner well and also her bre breakfast. Afterwards, she came to see full hail and hurting. This is a case from uh, JT Kent. It's a case of uterine hemorrhage. This is dash age 31, weighed about 120 pounds. Chronic illness, uterine hemorrhage. July 19, 1890. Menorrhagia, which is a 3+. Plus. Large clothes mixed with bright red liquid flow. Copious. On the day of her marriage, she was seized with uterine hemorrhage from the excitement. Any severe shock or mental disturbance brings on uterine hemorrhage. I think that almost everyone has found the remedy yet, right now, after seeing this symptom. Has a sickly face and is subject to sore throat on taking cold, uh, two plus of enlargement of the base of tongue. Feet always cold and damp, two plus. Stockings always feel damp. Sour taste in the morning, sour erectations. Constipation going many days without desire for stool. Glands of the neck enlarged and so when she has taken cold or disordered the stomach. Tickling in larynx and trachea, larynx and throat, unable to endure exertion, sadness, weeping, perspires much and easily. So this is actually a, a really clear case. You can think about prescribing on the basis of essence in this case. So I, I am seeing many remedies, yeah. Uh, shall I explain a question by Dr. Sam Samyukta, I think. But the epicac should have clean tongue. Not necessarily. The person can have a coated tongue, can have a clean tongue. The thing is, we have to do positive matching in case analysis. We are, we always think that, uh, like in, I am, uh, right now I am going through, a, going to say an example. You are saying that uh, pulsatla are usually having a weeping disposition, right? But there is a possibility that the person may not have a weeping disposition, but she says still, she or he, she or he or a kid or someone else, anything or an animal can be pulsarla. The person doesn't have to have a weeping disposition. If the person is having such a disposition, then it's good. It's even better. That's the only way you have to match the symptoms. If the person is not having this particular symptom, then it doesn't mean that he cannot be prescribed that remedy. The same is with uh, on prescribing on the basis of thermal reactions. When we are getting the case, and finally the case shows sulfur, then phosphorus, arsenic, arsenic calcarea, etc. And you find that the person is hot. So you are going to prescribe sulfur. But sulfur patients can be chilly as well. Phosphorus patients can be hot. Calcarea also can be hot. Because underneath calcarea, there may be a layer of sulfur. So that, that also can happen. So uh, another theory about uh, prescribing uh, 
the remedies is like this. I have heard somewhere. If the person is showing symptoms of calcarea and if she is hot, she or he is hot, you have to prescribe calcarea self or calcarea iodata. Actually, that notion is really absurd. If you have to prescribe calcarea self, then you have to get symptoms of calcarea self. Or if you want to prescribe calcarea iodata, you have to have symptoms of calcarea iodata. If the patient is hot and having symptoms of calcarea, it doesn't mean that you have to prescribe calcarea self or calcarea iodata. What about calcarea fluid? Can't we think about calcarea fluid then? Right? Or like any other medicines like that. It is possible. If you are having symptoms of uh, calcarea carb and uh, calicarb and the patient is hot, what are going to prescribe? Calisulf? Caliadata? Why not cal califluoratum? We can think about any remedies right there. So the thing is, prescribe on the basis of symptoms that are presented to you. Also, you can understand one thing from it. In case of proving, we actually do proving in a lot of persons. And the symptom picture that we are seeing, or the collection of symptoms that we see, uh, I will come to that. Repeat the name and put I will come to that. Uh, the symptom picture that we see, or the symptom collection that we see in the material medica, it's actually collected from a lot of persons. It's not seen in one person. So if one person can be showing a nausea with clean tongue in EPCAC, another, other, another person may not. It can happen. All these symptoms are collected from many sources. So you can't say that every case has to present all the symptoms of EPCAC. Some might uh, show these symptoms, some, uh, some might show the other four symptoms. You can't be sure. So that's how we have to done. Do not do negative matching. Always do positive matching. So EPCAC 200 was given and the first dose uh, was uh, given as a dry dose and the second dose, uh, that second packet that I have gave the patient, that I, I have given the patient, the patient took it after four hours after the first dose at her home. So that was uh, diluted. Uh, I had a doubt that maybe I have to uh, repeat it uh, another one or more time. So I said to dissolve it in a half glass of water and then take one spoon from it. Okay, coming to the second case, uh, the medicine is calcarea carb. There's no doubt that it's a, it's a an essence case of calcarea cup because you can see that any severe, this is the uh, really important keynote of a calcarea cup. On the day of her marriage, she was seized with the uterine hemorrhage from the excitement. Any kind of excitement brings on the flow. Any kind of physical exertion brings on the flow. Any severe mental disturbances brings on the flow. That is a really keynote characteristic of calcarea and also there are also other symptoms to symptoms to support the selection of calcarea like uh, subject to sore throats on taking cold after taking cold if the patient uh, the person develops sore throat common remedies are calcarea hepa lycopodium and also lacasis. Lacasis can also be seen in persons having sore throat after taking cold drinks. We doesn't believe, we actually, many of us doesn't believe that lacasis can be used in such a case. I have found cases like that because the person developed symptoms of lacasis. That's how. So, what matters is the symptom presentation by the patient, not our theories, not the theories made by any other person. If the person is showing symptoms of lacasis, then lacasis has to be prescribed. Uh, someone, I heard someone say that uh, the right-sided uh, lacasis is crotalis oridus. Actually, that's kind of absurd. Uh, there's a possibility that you can go wrong. That's why I'm saying absurd. 
I'm not uh, berating anybody's intelligence, but the thing is, a right-sided lacus is. Uh, can be a right sided lacus can be crotalis oridis. If the person shows symptoms of crotalis oridis, then it's right. That's my uh, idea about classical homeopathy. Uh, someone may go against, uh, maybe someone has uh, other experience to show that crotalis oridis has worked in that case. Then I am saying that in that case, there was symptoms of, there were symptoms of crotalis oridis, no doubt. Constipation going many days without desire for stool. So the thing is, with this symptom, constipation going many days without desire for stool, how can we take in the repertory? Constipation with no desire to stool, no desire for stool for a long time. It means one symptom. In the repertory, it is given as rectum inactivity. And why we have chosen this symptom? Because the patient doesn't have a desire to pass through. So the rectum is inactive. The symptom has to be taken as rectum inactivity of rectum. Also this one, constipation stool remains long in the rectum with no urge. I would always suggest a bigger rubric, but a rubric which doesn't contain more than 200 or 250 remedies. Or else you can do one thing. If you are having uh, doubts about one particular symptom, if you are not sure that if you can take this symptom or that, there is, a, there is an option in our repertory, in the software repertory, that we can combine both symptoms, combine both symptoms, and then uh, make it as a particular rubric and use that in an analysis. There's an option for that. So let me show this one. So if you are thinking that this is just an example, Stomach vomiting, incessant, and stomach nausea. If you feel that these are uh, these are very close rubrics, and you don't have to have two rubrics in the analysis because analysis, our repertory analysis is a mathematical process. So there is a possibility that uh, one remedy, which is in both rubrics, can come up high if we get all the symptoms from the same sphere itself. So we can do one thing. You can, you have to select, we have to press down the control button and select the rubrics you desire to combine and then right click. Right click, you get group or combine the rubrics. So you can select it as uh, keep all the remedies combining and keep the common remedies. Keep the common remedies means if these two rubrics uh, uh, has common remedies, that that uh, common remedies that remedies can uh, that remedies will only be displayed in the analysis. But it's better to keep all the remedies because if we don't want to uh, have the uh, problem of exclusion because there is a possibility that you can miss the similar one if you don't combine it with uh, combine the both rub uh, both rubrics and keeping all the remedies. Shall we go to the next case? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. I think uh, it's taking a lot more time. It's okay, sir. You can continue, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, this is the case that I have presented at. This is the third case, I think. Let me check. Yeah, case three. This is a case that I have presented at the uh, European Congress of Home Media at Vienna. Uh, and I'm happy to say that it got the best case of the day. It was a three-day session. Uh, actually, I was also doubtful in accepting this case because the person was uh, was having a diabetes for a, a long time, like uh, seven years. And uh, he had this big carbuncle in his back. It was really uh, frightful to see. So uh, I am... 
uh, going to another slide which shows the case and the original slide that I have presented at presented at Vienna. Just one minute. So, multi-drug resistant carbonyl treated with homeopathic medicine. Uh, I'm not going to say all about the introduction. Everyone knows this because the case has to be, uh, when, while you are presenting a product, the case has to be presented in such a way. You have to give an introduction, your aim and your method, your description. So, we don't have to go through all of this. A male of 32 years, who is a known diabetic for seven years, came on July 21st, 2015, and present with multiple abscesses in the right lower cell lumbar region, which coalesced. Uh, he was having carbuncles for the last 40 days, and he was taking allopathic medicine. He's an allopathic pharmacist by profession. He was taking allopathic medicine for the last 40 days, and the, all the lesions started to get together, come together and become a big, large one. Conventional treatment failed, so he resorted to homeopathy. Actually, he's a very close neighbor of mine. Uh, his shop is really close to my clinic. And he asked me, uh, pardon me if I say Malala, Dr. Malala Naraku, and then I get He actually asked me, is there any possibility for homeopathy to work in my case? And I said, I will try. And if it doesn't get better within two or three days, uh, I can't say that I can cure you. So you have to go for another doctor. So the symptoms he presented were high fever ranging from 103 to 104 degree Fahrenheit and severe pain in the affected area which made him sleepless. The pain made him restless and nervous. He just could not lie down at night. It's a two plus. All his complaints were aggravated at night. There was a purplish discoloration around the lesion and the pain were of stingy nature. His fasting blood glucose level was 150 mg per deciliter. Uh, I thought that uh, 150 mg might not be the right value, so I asked him to check again and it was still 150. The next day, I told him to check again and it was 150 again, 150 or 153 or something. Kenya method was applied and the analysis was made with the following rubrics. Mind restlessness, nervousness from pain at night, sleeplessness, pain with, actually that was a clear cut symptom. He couldn't sleep due to the pain. Fever, heat, septic fevers, because he was, he was uh, having a septic condition. So I took fever, heat, septic fevers. If we take fever as the uh, fever as the rubric, fever contains at least uh, 600 or 700 remedies. But septic fevers, very few remedies. Skin eruptions, carbuncles. And generally, uh, in, at that time, I was using complete dynamics. So in complete dynamics, the symptom is presented as this. Generally, is 9 to 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. aggravation. If you check for generally night aggravation, you get the symptom as this. So these were the symptoms that I have taken. Mild restlessness, nervousness, night pain from sleep, sleeplessness, pain with fever, heat, septic fevers, and skin eruptions, carbuncles, and generally 9 to 5 a.m., 5 p.m., 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. aggravation. The close running notice of Terralla cubensis, arsenic album, muriatic acid, rostox, epis, pyrogen, uh, lacrosis, garbage, arnic, etc. So from our metronica, it's almost sure that terminal acumensis can be given in this case because it is a major uh, remedy considered for carbuncle. And also if we check our keynotes, uh, carbuncle is the only thing that is mentioned in really black letters, really bold black letters. So this is the full terrendula cubensis, which, which has a, had a relative score of 100 from five rubrics. Arsenic album next. Muratic acid, rust socks, safety, spiral, and lacrosis. 
perpetual discoloration and stinging pains lead to the prescription of tannin-like evinces. Uh, he said actually the pains around the lesion was like that of being stung by insects. So there's a possibility that Epis can also be given, but Epis doesn't cover carbuncle as much as tannin-like did. <coughs> So the purplish discoloration, purplish discoloration can also indicate lacuses. But you know, almost all, all our metronomicus carbuncle is so uh, given that it comes at, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Tarala is considered to be a very uh, good remedy for carbuncle. That's why I prescribe carbuncle uh, Tarala for this case. Purpose discoloration and stingy pains led to the prescription of Tanola cubensis, which was given in 200 potency, just one dose. And I advised him to come back the next day with the uh, fasting blood sugar done again. So next day when he came, he said he's feeling some kind of betterment, but he's not sure what is happening. So I thought we can wait for some more time. So the follow-up, 23-7-2015, pain, sleep, <coughs> sorry, and discharge of pus was better than last time. Fever relief, he was having a temperature of 99 degree Fahrenheit, no changes visibly, so I decided to wait. So the thing is that when the patient first came to me, I'm not even sure that I'm going to uh, prescribe this person for more than two or three days because the condition was so severe that I told him, if he's not finding uh, any relief from my treatment, you have to go to an allopath. Next. So this is the time I took the photo. Actually, you can see that this covers almost the right uh, lumbar area. This is the central line, spine line, and this is the edge of a uh, edge of his abdomen. Actually, it almost covers almost the seventy-five percent of seventy-five percent of the area in his lumbar region. So this is the first picture that I took, and five days after. Uh, he was saying better, so I told him to come every five days. If he if he is having symptoms, he have to come the next day. Or if he is not having much symptoms, then please visit me within with a five days interval. So on 28/7/2015, 20, he was having no pain. The person discharging has reduced. Granulation tissue appeared. All other symptoms are better. Temperature was 98.9 degree Fahrenheit and placebo was prescribed again. So this was five days after the last picture. You can see granulation tissue has appeared in this, in this lesion. 4-8-2015, slight pain near the margins, otherwise better. So placebo again was given. This is the third picture, which was taken on 4-8-2015. And almost healed, no symptoms, placebo. This was taken on 11. 16 8, 2015, healed, no medicine. So this was the state just uh, after just, I think, uh, 25 or 26 days. The thing is that after prescribing carbuncle, uh, sorry, in Tarantula, uh, carbuncles never appeared till now. It was given in 2015. Five days, five years has passed, and then he doesn't uh, have. Uh, he haven't developed any carbuncle after the uh, any carbuncle after the dose of Tarantula. So I'm not saying it's the. Uh, uh, merit of my prescription, but it's uh, it sure shows the beauty of homeopathy and what a wonderful science we have. So, this is the only case of carbuncle that I have treated, yes, so far, and it has yielded such a better result that I am uh, happy that 
and also confident that I can prescribe for carbon cases again. So in such a severe case, I even doubted that uh, my prescription won't work or maybe I can go wrong while prescribing. But the case was really good and also showed very, really good prognosis. So this was the conclusion of the case presentation. So we have to see one thing that only one dose of tarantula was prescribed during the whole length of time. Because after the first dose of tarantula, the patient didn't have much symptoms. So when do we have to repeat a medicine? We only have to repeat a medicine if the person has a relapse of symptoms or the case has become a standstill. If the patient is having a relapse or having an antidotal effect by anything from his life, maybe uh, from coffee or maybe from another medicine or maybe from... Also, one thing is that psychic uh, changes can also... The problems that affect our mind can also result in an antidotal action and a relapse of symptoms. Or the case can't progress beyond a certain limit. Then it's a time to prescribe another dose of the same remedy, maybe in a higher potency. That's why I gave the second dose in a, uh, in a, as a divided dose, as in a first class method. So this was the case of uh, Kavangal. Marish, am I taking too much time? No, sir, it's okay, sir. You can continue, sir. Carbonyl since how many days? Uh, shall I uh, shall I answer a few questions in the chat window? Yes, sir. You can so. Okay. What about the diabetic medicine? Uh, yes, he was taking diabetic medicines. I have not prescribed for his diabetes. So what is the potency? 200. Uh, whether you have used any homeopathic tincture? No, I haven't. For dressing the wound? No, I haven't. Can taken be? Uh, can it be taken? I think the question was, can it be taken as a constitutional remedy? No, I don't think so. Because carbungal cover, uh, tarantula covered the condition of carbungal he is having. I'm not, I can't say that he is a, uh, his constitutional picture can be of tarantula. And tarantula actually is a lesser known drug. We don't know. We can't uh, say for sure that it has the symptoms of the person, uh, person that he, uh, re person that required tarantula for his particular acute complaint. There are no symptoms from tarantula. We can be sure that the person is having. We only have very few symptoms from, uh, very few symptoms in tarantula. Since carbon, uh, since how many days in duration? Okay. It was, uh, the person was having this carbon. Actually, it was uh, multiple abscess, three or four abscess uh, around that area. And all coalesced within 40 days. For the last 40 days, he was having this big lesion. So it was around, I think, almost uh, 50, 50 or 55 days. Potency, it was 200. Was he on insulin or anti-glycemic? He was on anti-glycemic tablets. Can constitutional medicine alone bring glucose level to normal? Uh, I'm not sure that constitutional medicine only uh, can bring glucose level to normal because I have seen cases of diabetes when we give medicine all the other symptoms get better he is generally healthy fit but his diabetes, uh, glucose level doesn't come down to normal I have seen that so I'm not sure but also seen in many cases that after giving the medicine the glucose level has to uh, has returned to normal maybe it's because of the curability of the condition in the first case the patient may not be 
in a curable stage, he may have crossed the limit to the incurability. Or there is another possibility that after this medicine, you have to give another medicine which is going to work on the condition of diabetes he is having. There's also a possibility like that. Carbon glow of fatty dissipation, dressing with what? It was a sterile dressing was used. Can you please elaborate the differentiating points between lactases? Just that's one. Lactases and terranula in this case. Actually, lactases was a close contender in this case. But in case of lactases, because it is a polycrest, I, I thought that you can find more symptoms of lactases in this case. If you are not getting any symptoms which can be used as a characteristic of lactases, we can't prescribe on that. But there are some symptoms which are characteristic of carbon as well in this case. So that's why I prescribed carbon. Oh, sorry, terodula. Actually, I'm mixing between the both two. So that's why I prescribed terodula for the case. Constitution remedy for carbon. Actually, I'm I can't answer for that. Constitutional remedy for carbon. I don't think there's a constitutional remedy for carbon. But in the in this case, after I gave him. Uh, tarantula, the patient didn't have one carbuncle in the last five years. So I'm not saying that it's a constitutional remedy, but it has peeled off that layer of having carbuncle. That condition he was having, the susceptibility to develop carbuncle has been destroyed by tarantula. That's all I can say. What could be used as a local application? Actually, I don't use local application in cases, but in cases of injuries, I use calendula or echinacea, but not in chronic cases, but not in conditions which is which has developed as a part of the uh, pathological, uh, which is uh, an expression of pathology in a case. I don't use local applications. So I am going to the next case. This case is varicose eczema. Thank you. Prasanna Pillai. His name is Prasanna Pillai. 56 years of age, a tissue of honor was suffering from varicose veins of lower limbs. He said 3 plus for the last 25 years. History of suppressed eruptions. Most probably, SSSS. On letting lips hang down. The pain was of a burning nature. What do you suggest as a remedy that can be used in this case? Vipera, Singham, Vipera, Asalva, Asal because the patient was having burning nature, okay. Hamamelis, Hamamelis, Sulfur. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is a case of varicose eczema. This is not a varicose ulcer case. There is no bleeding in this case. Okay. So, Vipera. Sulfur, graphitis, discharges offensive and discharges profusely. Okay, so graphitis, sulfur, sulfur because of the burning nature and also the uh, offensive nature of discharge, right? Okay. I will go to the case. These were the rubrics taken for the case. Skin eruptions discharging moist. Skin eruption discharging moist offensive, which was given a one mark. 
extremities varicose veins lower limbs three mark extremities hang down letting limbs aggravation this is a two mark skin eruption suppressed skin eruptions burning actually in vipera i would like to add one more thing there is a kind of bursting pain in the lower limbs when it's hung down actually that is the keynote of vipera the person feels that his leg is going to burst because of the pooling of blood in the varicose veins so the analysis came up with graphitis and carbovich then fluoric acid and lycopus and calcarega uh, this repertory is with ocus combus it's an online version it only have an online version so these were the symptoms that were under graphitis skin eruption suppress skin eruptions in discharging moist extremities varicose veins lower limbs skin eruptions burning and skin eruption discharging moist which is offensive but it doesn't had this symptom extremities hang down letting limbs aggravation the next came up medicine that came up is carbovich extremities varicose vein lower limbs first you have to understand that carbovich is a really good medicine for varicose veins skin eruptions and discharging moist uh not only varicose veins but also for piles because uh any condition that increases the portal hypertension can be used as an indication for carbovich the pooling of blood the stasis of circulation this all can be seen in carbovich skin eruptions is discharging moist extremities hang down letting limbs aggravation skin eruption suppressed and skin eruptions burning actually uh, carbovich covered the most of the symptoms most of the important symptoms in the case so i prescribed carbovich over graphitis Uh, i looked at the case and i didn't find any symptoms that can be used in support of graphitis and when i asked he had a history of asthma in his childhood uh in which uh, he said uh, most of the time the parents believed that he was going to die he was actually gasping for breath that also can be used as an indication of carbovich but i am not saying that i used it for the purpose of repertorization but i thought about it when i thought about the case when i analyzed the case so in this case carbovich was given and this was the result this was uh, this photo was taken on on the 24 october 2019 you can see all the heel varicose ulcers on his ankles here and also here so he was given carbovich on 24 on 24 10 and i advise him to come within 2 days and he came on 26 10 2019 this was the change after carbovich and even after two more days after this is the condition the he was in after 4 days of carbovich and after this uh he's a tea shop owner he works uh, really close to my place uh he wakes up at every day at 4 am and uh he doesn't sit at his tea shop he stands a lot of the time so that's how he developed this varicose ulcers so after this he didn't bother to come because whenever he uh, i saw him uh, around in the road he's a doctor it's okay it's all already good so I, do i have to come again i said no you don't have to 
but don't drink coffee when you are taking medicine. He was actually really fond of coffee, but I advised him not to take coffee again because I suspected that if he is uh, going to have a relapse and I have to prescribe another dose, it might not work. So I advised him to not to take coffee again. So this was the condition after carbovage, after four days after carbovage. Sorry, sorry. Let me check the chat window. So, so yeah, Cabo H, Cabo Animalis, and also suppression of skin disease. Yes. Okay. Cabo H, Cabo H was given in 200. Cover is 200. Description was 200. Just one dose. Just one dose. Since the patient was getting better, I didn't uh, thought about prescribing another dose. In this case, because uh, I told him to come after two days, because one more thing, if the person is not having a good effect to carbovage, then I might uh, I have to take the case again. So that's why I asked him to come within two days. And after I saw that he was getting better after carbovage, I didn't dare to prescribe any another dose. Because I was, uh, there's a possibility that if you give another dose, even before it's needed, the case can go haywire. So I thought about not prescribing for the time being. And it has proved well. So how about another case? Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Shall I continue with another case? Uh, yes, sir. You can continue, sir. Okay. This is a case of breast abscess. Could not hear about this, uh, this one. I have taken only a few more questions on the last case. I would like to address them right now. You have taken only the preceding symptoms alone. Are you following this method in acutes? Mental less priority. Uh, if the person is showing uh, symptoms, uh, particular characteristic features in its mental spheres, then I take it. If not, I don't go trying to uh, pry them out, uh, pry those symptoms from his mind. Because if I try to do that, there's a possibility that I will start assuming his symptoms. So I don't do that. If the person tells that he is having symptoms, this kind of uh, changes in his mind, these are the uh, mental features that he is having, then good, I'll take them. Could not hear about his childhood. No, nothing much about childhood because he was, uh, so I only said that he was having bronchial asthma in his childhood with a severe kind of, actually all the uh, relatives of uh, him thought he was going to die. Actually, he, was, he used to gas for breath. Session. Okay. So these were the presenting complaints. 
A lady came to my clinic with a swelling of her left breast close to the areola margin with pain and tenderness. Inspection revealed a ruptured abscess, so focus, which was painful to touch. She was complaining of slight heaviness for the last two days. There was considerable heat on the affected part, and the area around the abscess felt hard to touch. It's a classic picture, classic picture of breast abscess, and uh, I'm sure that almost everyone will know the medicine. Appetite reduced. Thirst, four to five glasses of water. This is the usual intake. Thermals is a chilly patient, no particular change with the appearance of the abscess. Eliminations, nothing abnormality. So, this was the first picture that was taken. Medicine, uh, HEPA, serves Phytolaca, Silesia, HEPA, Bellona. Okay. HEPA because sensitivity to touch and tenderness. Phytolaca due to heaviness, sensitivity to touch and breast abscess, hardness, extra. Silesia. Silesia just uh, was Silesia prescribed only on the basis of abscess, presence of abscess, or do we have any other corroborating symptoms? Phytolaca. Okay. Bryonia. Okay. So these were the this were the symptoms that were selected. The repertorial totality was chest abscess separations mammae, chest heat mammae, there was heat of the affected part, chest heaviness mammae, chest pain mammae touch aggravation. You can find that almost all of the symptoms are selected from the one chapter itself. Also, general is abscess separations hard. Because I didn't, I couldn't find a hard separation or hard abscess within within the chest chapter. So I went for the general chapter. The thing with uh, when we can use such a general symptom. If the person is having a particular nature of complaint in more than one area of his uh, body or more than one area uh, of his anatomical uh, parts, then you can take it in the generalist chapter. Or, or else, if you, uh, you can see as in cases of lacuses. With the appearance of flow, her mental symptoms, her physical complaints, uh, her emotional problems, everything seems to vanish when her menses appears. So it's better that you take that symptom in the generality chapter. If the person is only having a relief in her mental sphere after uh, the appearance of menses, then you have to take likewise. If you are getting relief in more than relief or aggravation in any other case, aggravation in uh, any other uh, parts of the body or in the mental sphere or in the uh, emotional level, if uh, the person is having an aggravation from uh, any particular kind of modality, then it is better you have to, uh, you take it from the generalist chapter. So in this case, generalist has a separation hard was taken because I didn't find, I couldn't find a hard separation in the chest chapter. So these were the rubric selected. This was the analysis done. You see chest ab abscess separations of mammae, chest heat mammae, which was also a four mark, uh, two mark symptom, chest heaviness mammae, chest pain mammae touch aggravation, and generally abscess separations hard. Chest pain mammae, uh, phytolaca covered all the, uh, not all the symptoms, four symptoms divide of this, this chest pain mammae touch aggravation. But in Medica, we can see that touch aggravates the pain in phytolaca cases, just like as in Belladonna, touch aggravates. The thing is, in phytolaca, support ameliorates, but touch aggravates, as also in China. 
Uh, I'm saying China not because it is, it is seen in the chest pain chapter, but also in the generalist chapter, you can see that slightest touch aggravation, but hard pressure ameliorates in case of China. Phytolaca slight touch aggravates, but it's not seen in the uh, repertory, but it's seen in the material medica. So Phytolaca was prescribed. Prescription Phytolaca decanter 30. One dose and advise her to return after two days. I usually do the same with uh, every single case which presents their symptom like this. Like a severe kind of pain, I usually advise them to come within two days after the first prescription. She slept well, had a definite relief in pain and the lesion was no longer painful to touch. The heat has lessened and the feeling of heaviness was gone. The surrounding area was still hard. So this was the follow-up. Date of visit was 18-1-2020. Follow-up, 22-1-2020. Prescription, placebo and the lady was advised to... This was the photo taken on 22nd. Prescription placebo and the lady was advised to come if she develops pain again and to report after one week. And this was taken on 29th. The lesion has healed well, no heat or no residual hardness. So in this case also, fight like a 30, uh, one dose, only one dose was given, which resulted in this uh, cure. All thanks to the brilliant science of homeopathy. Actually, this was uh, taken as an, uh, made as an uh, individual slide. That's why you saw the last slide. So in this, Dr. Gidu has said fight laka. Yes, there is a, that is the right answer. Bryonia, conium. Okay. Conium is actually not much useful in uh, cases of breast abscess. Conium is much more useful in cases of mastitis uh, with hardness, real hardness, as in case of fight laka. And with also conium, the pain is not as severe as in fight laka. I am not saying conium is not painful, but conium is less painful than fight luck. So in the previous case in NASH, it is given that we can think about sulfur in history of suppressed eruption. So we can think about sulfur in case of I mean, uh, cases of uh, suppressed eruptions, which has a uh, history of suppressed eruption but you have to have some symptoms that can be uh, that can be used in the support of sulfur. If you are not finding such symptoms in support of sulfur, how can we give? Many of our medicine, if we check the repertory part in, in our repertory, in the history of patients with history of suppressed skin eruption, you can find a lot of remedies. It can be graphitis, it can be sulfur, it can be Merxol, uh, it can be Lycopodium, it can be Calcarega, it can be Bacillum, it can be Sepia. Many other remedies might come up. That's is in dress, very periodical and same site. Uh, I didn't understand this. Uh, very periodical meaning by Dr. Deepa Amar, I think. Absence and right, very periodical. I didn't understand quite understand what she implied. Very periodical and same site. What rubric to take, sir? Oh, you are asking that if the person is having abscess in one particular site again and again, which is a recurrent kind of abscess, right? 
if the person is having a recurrent abscess, it is better to take the case as a chronic one. You have to prescribe likewise because every time the person exhibits the symptom in the same manner, it means there is an inherent weakness in his vitality or in his susceptibility that expresses the symptom like that. So you have to prescribe on the chronic picture of that, not on the acute prescribe, not as an acute. Can we think about carbo animals? Actually, carbo animals uh, would have a lot of other symptoms too. So there's a and uh, from my personal experience, I only have given carbo animals for very few cases. And uh, it was one case with uh, a severe kind of vertigo, which had a keynote that when he heard some sound, he couldn't understand where the sound uh, was coming from. He couldn't say the direction from which uh, the sound came. That was the only characteristic I got in that case. And only one, only one case so far in my practice for which I have given cover animals. Yeah, fine, like a breast abscess, that's in breast. Okay. I think I answered that question before. What an opportunity to see very interesting and challenging is excellent approach in doing such cases. Thank you. I think most of the doubts have been clear. Do you do we have one more time for one more case? Uh, yes, sir. You can continue, sir. Okay. So case five. Last was a bit of six, you know. Okay. Case five of migraine. Patient's name is Remya Kaya. She's a, an allopathic nurse, has been suffering from headaches for the last 10 years. Headaches is usually seen before menses. Pain in the forehead above left eye extending to the back of head. Whenever she gets out in the sun, she develops a bout of headache. Strong odors aggravated. Retires to a dark room during headache. Aversion to talk during headache. That this is almost specific for very few remedies. Aversion to talk during headache. Wants to be left alone and doesn't wants to be disturbed. Diarrhea in the morning on baking. Diarrhea from coffee. And the like sweets. Any suggestions? Any suggestions from you guys? Like an item. Why like an item? Natural mood. Natural mood has few symptoms like pain above the left eye. Actually, natural headache is more towards the temple, not about the left eye. In the left temple, okay. uh, like an item. Why like an item? Like an item is an excellent remedy for migraine, but why like an item? Glonoin, sulfur. Just because uh, the person is having headache when uh, she is going out. That's why you prescribe glonoin. Headache before menses. Okay, good. Headache before menses is a good, good keynote for lacanana. Iris, argentum nitricum. Uh, okay. Why argentum nitricum? Why iris? Circular syndicate, spigelia. Spigelia is an important remedy for headache above the left eye. Okay, lacases. Lacases can also be thought about. But there are other symptoms also. If you are looking at left sided headache, you can find many remedies. There can be sepia. Left, sepia is a really good left sided remedy. Like an anemone can be. But in like an anemone, most probably we will find another keynote, like change of symptoms. Okay. 
then lacuses okay cocculus cocculus why tuja tuja can be thought about a case in with the headache over uh, in the left temporal as well and also the character of tuja is like a, as if a nail has been pressed from the side sulfur okay desire for sweets did desire for sweets uh, uh may you select sulfur in this case and the diary in the morning as well right in, okay in cocculus case usually uh, headache is associated with uh, kind of vomiting and also like change of position change of places uh, from as if from uh, like a line rising from a lying position rising from a sitting position etc can aggravate the condition maca okay why do you select maca shall we go to the analysis okay so these were the symptoms that i took for the case uh, the patient was having diarrhea driving after that as soon as she woke up she was having diarrhea and also uh, so when i looked at the repertory there was two rubrics that can be used rectum diarrhea morning bed driving out of and rectum diarrhea morning rising after since i was not sure which rubric to be taken which uh, rubric was the most apt one so i decided to combine them both so these two rubrics were combined head pain menses before okay head pain menses before head pain sun from exposure to head pain orders from strong rectum diarrhea coffee after mind disturbed hours to be generalist food and drink sweets desire head pain headache forehead in above the eyes above the left eye extending to occiput so the analysis came up with bryonia as the most probable prescription next remedy was natron gal Bryonia covered, mind disturbed, hours to be. Every time you have to uh, think like this. If you have a symptom, particularly a mental symptom, and you are clear about that symptom, it is better that your medicine should have that symptom also. If you get a feature, a mental feature, a mental uh, characteristic of a patient. while you are taking the case and you are sure about that then it belongs to the essence of the case we can prescribe on that and especially when he she, uh, she is having headache she was very averse to be disturbed she didn't want to talk to anyone she want to retire to a dark room actually when someone asked her how she was doing she even uh, didn't even want to be questioned like that also she didn't even want uh, want to have a sympathetic talk from others just asking uh, her how her headache is uh, was even a problem for her so she wanted to avoid all that and want to go to a dark room so head pain headache forehead in the eyes above left which was extending to the occiput and head pain uh, sun from exposure to Head pain, menses before. You can think, you can see that Brian also there was that symptom also. This one.
rectum diarrhea morning bed driving out of rectum diarrhea morning rising after we always study this as a specific for sulfur this also specific keynote for bryonia that uh, rectum diarrhea morning bed driving out of it's also a peculiar keynote for bryonia too generally food and drink sweets is desired bryonia also has disorder sweets the only two rubrics that were not covered by bryonia were head pain orders from strong which was in a one mark in the case and rectum diarrhea coffee after let me check that rubric so these were the medicines under that rubric to jan cyclamen were the main important remedies this group the another remedy was natron cow which covered sun exposure to aggravation and menses before aggravation which had sweet desires and diarrhea morning rising after but it didn't have the mental symptom also the particular site the site where the headache occurred and also the symptoms pertaining to the diarrhea so that's why natron cow was uh, boiler glonoin glonoin only covered headache pain menses before and a sun exposure to but it didn't have the symptoms usually seen in glonoin like uh, aggravation in a hot warm room aggravation uh, when his head gets his or head uh, head gets heated that kind of symptoms were not seen in this case the next remedy was sulfur the thing with sulfur is if you take a case and repertorize with our uh, with any repertory you can find that sulfur comes at least uh, within a six or seven remedies that's for sure because sulfur covers almost uh, 44 uh, i think 40 42000 symptoms in our repertory so there is a, always a possibility that sulfur is going to come up in our analysis at least within the first ten at least within the first ten i'm saying that at least within the six but almost you can almost be sure that the sulfur will come up within the uh, first ten remedies that's also the reason why sulfur is the most over prescribed remedy uh, you can think about uh, when you take a case and you can find surely find symptoms pertaining to sulfur in any case so we have to take an extra precaution that you have to keep that in mind the case can show symptoms of sulfur but it may not be sulfur so if you have that prejudice in mind you can help from the prejudice that the case can be sulfur so in this case bryonia was given bryonia with 200 was given uh actually this nurse works in uh, khatar so uh, not khatar sorry it's uh, she is working in oman so i gave her medicine for 3 uh, to 4 months and uh, after one month she again called me she messaged me and told me that uh, she was having another bout of headache which is also of a severe nature so i prescribed bryonia again and one more time i have to prescribe her bryonia and after for the last 6 to 7 months uh, she is saying that she is not having much headaches it was after a heavy day of work or uh, whenever she went out she was having a headache and if she develops headache it was totally incapacitating she couldn't work anymore she had to take high dose painkillers from the hospital just to function normally so uh, after three or i think it was the third dose after the third dose which was given in january or february uh, she was much better afterwards she was having only few headaches which were easier to manage so uh, the thing is with this uh, corona issue Uh, she didn't get uh, she couldn't complete her next course of medicine she only received medicine for four or five months the next course of medicine well, i was not able to send her the next course of medicine because flights were cancelled 
So she is really doing better. Uh, she took almost three doses of Brania to get into the state where she is right now. Okay. Also, the symptom like uh, the pain she was having above the left, in the left forehead, above the eye, is almost specific for Brania, sepia. Natural can be thought about. Lacanina also. Lacasis. Tuja, Tuja and natrimal almost the symptoms uh, is slightly shifted to the side, uh, to the temple, to the towards the left temple where the person feels like a convex button is pressed, something is pressing inward from outside. Actually, though, that's the, how a natrimal patient and a uh, Tuja patient explains his symptoms. But in sepia and Brania, the patient usually says the person uh, patient is having headache in this area, but it's not in the sinus. It is actually a, a little bit deeper, which extends throughout the head into the through the brain into the occiput. That's how a Bryony and sepia patient would say. And you can see that Bryony and sepia are the major remedies in that particular group. I will go to the chat window. Max also has this symptom. Okay. So, but Brania is predominantly right sided. I'm not saying Max doesn't have this symptom, uh, but Brania covered this symptom picture more. That's why Brania was prescribed. But I think left-sided headache in Maxomia, it's more like a left-sided headache, not above the left eye, I think. So, but Brania is predominantly right-sided. Brania is predominantly right-sided. It doesn't mean that it can have symptoms on left side. Because it's proof that if you can find it in repertory, it's proof that there is a left-sided symptoms. So, there's no point in arguing that. Some of our masters have found medicines that are effective in left-sided headaches. Aversion to Turk during headache is a common symptom. So is it considered for repetition? How can we say that aversion to talk during headache is a common symptom? Uh, the thing is, uh, there can be many changes in a person during an acute exacerbation of a complaint, but we can't say it is common. Actually, the term common means any symptom that is common to all kind of diseases or all kind of drugs. Like you say, the person is having weakness. Weakness is a common symptom. Until characterized, unless characterized by a particular modality or a characteristic feature, then it's a common symptom. Aversion drop during headache is not a common symptom. There are persons having headache who doesn't, who, uh, doesn't want to be alone wants to talk with others, wants to be with others, there are persons having that. So how can we say that it is a common symptom? In any case, how will we come to know if the case is going towards cure or suppression, any indications? Okay. Uh, the thing is that if the person is getting better, the brunt of the pathology starts to go outside. Uh, what I'm what I'm saying is this: the severity of the complaint reduces as well. The symptom picture moves on to uh, lesser important organs. Like uh, uh, if he's having a severe kind of headaches, it might uh, change to some kind of uh, or uh, some kind of. Just uh, like a vomiting, or uh, just like a, a slight headache, or a slight disorientation, slight heaviness of head, it means that medicine is working. But uh, we usually use this uh, suppression term very frequently, and, uh, and uh, actually, the, sub the word suppression has lost its meaning right now. If the person is having another symptom, particularly in the predictive sense, 
if uh, in the higher level of uh, in the higher level of the chart you are saying the case is going into suppression but actually that's not the right case in practice there are persons developing such symptoms but they can go back to a better state afterwards it is seen so in according to me i if i am saying if uh, it's my opinion uh, in my opinion if the case is going to a, a higher degree of pathology then you can be sure that the case is going towards suppression we are not helping the patient if the patient develops a disease which uh, he is uh, going to uh, suffer more uh, going to uh, have complications more then sure the patient is going to suppression other than this if the person uh, if the patient says that the lesion uh, the, he had a lesion in the abdomen and next time when he came he had a lesion in the chest no we can't say that uh, it's almost certain that the case is going towards suppression we can watch the case then we have to decide not just one symptom can show that the person is going to suppression i think that explanation uh, is enough for you right dr sneha your experience with 50 pills for hypertensis in chronic cases uh, i have used 50 ml in case but scarcely in very severe cases of skin condition severe cases of asthma and a few cases uh, in few cases actually i gave uh, in cancer cases i gave uh, calica syrup or one but as a dry dose actually he was a very uh, down to earth person so i believe that if i gave him the syrup or potency as a remedy solution bottle he might misuse it so the thing is i gave him as a dry dose and next time i asked him to uh, dilute it in the first glass and then take it that's how i gave uh, calica syrup one in cancer case but in skin cases i have found i have given it with good results 